can get started. Um, so uh, this talk is going to be uh, about the embedded GPU space and uh, yeah, what's going on, what's uh, been happening, and uh, uh, what you can look forward to in the future. But before we get into that, um, who am I? My name is Robert Foss. I live in Germany. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Collabora. And I work in the open source graphics space. So that means doing kernel work, Mesa work, Android work, Wayland work, that kind of stuff. It's all over the place. Uh, but uh, uh, this is going to be a talk about the different graphics vendors and uh, what you can look forward to. So let's get started. Uh, the uh, first vendor I want to talk about is um, Intel. And they have a very, very long history of being good, solid uh, open source contributors. They started in 2004 with the i915 driver and has never stopped, essentially. They, they're still doing super good work. And uh, their driver supports the very latest OpenGL and Vulkan uh, um, standards. And this is what their timeline of development looks like. Uh, it's a bit truncated because none of the other, other vendors have been around for that long, so it starts at 2009. But uh, uh, there's a few interesting features of this uh, diagram. Uh, one is that all of their hardware is supported. That's not the case for every vendor. And, uh, but since Intel has been around for such a long time, all of their, vendor, or all of their hardware is very, very well supported. Um, another interesting feature is the blue driver, the blue dot, uh, the Iris uh, Gen 8 Plus uh, item. And uh, the Iris driver is the name for Intel's new uh, graphics driver. And it is as open source as the old one, but it's using the same driver fr framework that the other open source graphics drivers are, are using. It's called uh, Gallium, and it's a framework for building a graphics driver. It gives you a lot of stuff for free, and Intel has uh, chosen since uh, about one or two years ago to, uh, to look into uh, building a, uh, building a Gallium-based driver, and um, it's been paying off. Um, this driver is uh, included in the latest version of Mesa, and it performs uh, better in some cir circumstances than the previous one that has had like 15 years of development poured into it, and that's quite impressive. Um, specifically, uh, they quoted uh, CPU performance and lower CPU overhead as being a, a large contributing factor to wanting to switch. And uh, that's good news for not just Intel, but it's good news for all of the GPU uh, driver vendors, because that means um, the resources that Intel pour into testing and development goes to all of us, essentially. Whether you're on a, a Vivante GPU or an ARM GPU or whatever, you're also going to see some benefits from this, be it better stability through testing or better performance through optimizations. Uh, so that's very interesting. And the, the last almost equally uh, as interesting part is the Gen 12 uh, GPU. So it looks like just another one of their uh, integrated uh, GPUs, but Gen 12 is, as far as I understand it, going to support uh, being run as a dedicated GPU. So this is, is going to mean that they're going to offer a, a higher performance, dedicated, separate GPU. Um, I, I would assume that it's going to be used for uh, primarily like server enterprise type workloads. So it's probably not going to be in your, your next gaming rig, but, uh, but who knows? The graphics support is there anyway. So uh, on to the next vendor, AMD. They're also like a really good uh, open source citizen. They've been around since um, 2009 in this space when they decided to start op um, opening up their documentation for their GPUs. And providing this documentation essentially means that you don't have to reverse engineer their driver in order for uh, you to start writing your own new driver. So taking away the, um, the reverse engineering work really lowers the, the threshold for, for a driver to emerge. And since then, a lot of AMD drivers have emerged. There's, yeah, almost too many. Like, I'll go into it, but uh, uh, there's like a, a forest of different, slightly different uh, uh, AMD drivers. 
Uh, all of them, or all of the current ones, support uh, the latest OpenGL and Vulkan standards. Uh, so you can expect it to work with anything, essentially. And this is what the, the uh, timeline looks like. So if you look to the left, the blue ones are uh, drivers, or they're uh, platforms that are supported by the kernel Radeon driver. The Radeon driver targets the really old hardware. Uh, think uh, the past 15 years up to like five years ago. Super old hardware. And the red uh, uh, dots on the timeline support like everything else essentially up to the very latest GPUs, the ones released a few months ago. They are all supported upstream, both in the kernel and on Mesa, which is very nice. But apart from uh, the uh, Mesa driver, AMD also supplies their own user space driver that is also open source. And uh, one is called AMD GPU, and the other one is called uh, AMD Vulkan, and they support OpenGL and Vulkan, of course. Uh, these are um, not the, the community drivers, but they are uh, fully and totally open source, but they're maintained by AMD, essentially. AMD also provides resources for the community drivers, which seems like a crazy amount of extra work. Uh, not just going with the, only the community drivers, but uh, I can also see their point of view of wanting to reuse a driver across all platforms. But a driver like that is not something that can be included in, into the Mesa or kernel project. Uh, then there's NVIDIA, which is a very interesting story. Uh, they've been around for a long time. Since 2000, 2010, there's been an open source driver called Nouveau. NVIDIA has never really contributed towards it. They have in the very limited case of Tegra, which is um, their embedded platforms. They've contributed some code towards the Nouveau project. Uh, the Nouveau uh, project supports the, the latest OpenGL standards, um, but it doesn't really matter. It's still not useful, and we're gonna get into that. So if you look at the reverse engineering timeline here, this is essentially all of the GPUs that have been released by NVIDIA in, in this uh, time span. And if we look at the support for GPUs in the upstream kernel and Mesa projects, it's also essentially all of the GPUs. But it's still not usable because uh, in order for you to uh, make the GPU go faster or go fast, you need to load the firmer, uh, a firmer blob provided by NVIDIA. This allows the GPU to increase the frequency at, a, at which it's uh, operating from the baseline, the lowest safety levels, to the actual performance levels. Uh, this blob exists in their, uh, the driver they ship, and uh, it is usable. You could use it with the open source drivers and just load it up. However, they, through legalese, prohibit this from, from being allowed. So while it's entirely technically possible, Debian can't, for example, ship this blob, nor can you, nor can I. Only NVIDIA is allowed to ship it. So that effectively means that uh, Nouveau is not useful. You can't use it. And this is some, something that would be super simple to fix if people were interested in, in doing that. Uh, then there's uh, imagination. Uh, so we used to see a lot of imagination, imagination GPUs in uh, a bunch of different uh, uh, places. From Apple devices, which is maybe not what this t talk is tar targeting, <laughs> but uh, to uh, uh, single board computers and uh, um, a bunch of things. They're not quite as common anymore. Um, they also have essentially no upstream uh, support at all. Uh, Imagination has written um, a sort of stub kernel driver, but it can't be accepted into the Linux kernel since there's no user space 3D driver that actually uses it. Uh, they have a few Mesa patches floating around, but they don't even uh, try to offer like 3D support in them. So that essentially means that that can't be merged either. Uh, so until they change their mind, <laughs> there's not a lot to be said for imagination either. Unlike many of the other drivers, uh, the community has shown very little interest in reverse engineering their GPUs. That's partly because they're very complicated. <laughs> they're uh, slightly different from the other sets of GPUs. But um, 
unfortunately, that, that means that no one has really picked this up in a serious way. Uh, Imagination is the last vendor that I know of that doesn't have any type of open source GPU, uh, which is interesting and something that they maybe should take note of. Uh, there's a trajectory here, and the trajectory is that every, every GPU has an open source uh, driver, except for them. Uh, on to Qualcomm, uh, which is a much better story. Uh, so the Freedreno driver, which targets uh, the Adreno GPUs of Qualcomm, has been developed since 2013. And uh, Qualcomm has been supporting this GPU, uh, or at least lately they've been supporting it directly and indirectly with actual, actual developer time, which is really nice to see. Um, and there's uh, a, little bit, uh, a little piece of trivia in the name of their GPU, the Adreno. Uh, so Qualcomm bought the mobile handset of AMD uh, in 2009, including their GPUs. Uh, which is why their uh, GPU is called uh, Adreno. It's a wordplay on Radeon. Uh, this is what the reverse engineering process has looked like for the Qualcomm GPUs. These are all of their GPUs, so every single one is supported. And this reverse engineering work was done by uh, Rob Clark and Ilya Merkin and others in the community. And if we look at the results of that, um, you see that there's not a lot of lag between a driver being reverse engineered and it being supported in the upstream, up, in the upstream projects. Maybe it's six months, a year at most, which is pretty incredible given that uh, to reverse engineer a GPU, that's, that's not a trivial task. Uh, and this is partly done just for fun because people enjoy it. Like, not everyone is, or very few are, are paid to do this reverse engineering work. Um, and then we have uh, Broadcom, which is, uh, uh, they're, I guess, a very recent uh, citizen to the open source uh, driver community. Uh, in 2015, they started uh, developing the VC4 driver. The VC4 is the GPU that's in the Raspberry Pi or rather the Raspberry Pi 1 through 3. The Raspberry Pi 4 ships the VC5 GPU. Oh, sorry, 6 GPU, I believe. Um, and there was essentially no reverse engineering done uh, for this driver since it was sponsored entirely by uh, Broadcom and they clearly have documentation in-house. And they essentially hired a community person, uh, Eric Anholt, to write this driver and he did until very recently. Uh, so this is what the, the timeline looks like for, uh, for uh, uh, Broadcom. There's not a lot of GPUs in there. The, there's the VC4 and the V3D uh, driver. The V3D driver uh, targets VC5 and VC6 GPUs. Uh, the next vendor is uh, Vivante. And a driver was uh, starting to be developed in 2015 for their, their hardware. It was, ori originally it was entirely like community driven. Um, and it started, uh, it was based on reverse engineering since uh, 2012. Uh, since then, uh, reverse engineering and development has been spon sponsored amongst, uh, or some of it uh, by aircraft suppliers. If you saw the talk before mine, uh, there is a, real problem with uh, long-term support and, uh, and uh, GPUs and proprietary drivers. If you want to offer long-term support that's not the one year or five years or even 10 years, or in the case of aircraft suppliers, like 20 years, you really can't rely on a vendor both being there and being willing to uh, supply you with an actual proprietary driver with the latest fixes. Um, so uh, some of the, uh, the people in our industry have chosen to just forego the proprietary driver and sponsor the development of a new one. And uh, this is what the reverse engineering uh, timeline looks like. And it resulted in a driver um, rather recently. Uh, so this driver is uh, 
shipped now, uh, as far as I know, in, <laughs> in actual uh, uh, aircrafts, and it's used, which should be like a sign of a vote of confidence. And to, to further illustrate where, where this driver is, um, here's a benchmark. It's just a random benchmark, basically. And it shows that the, the open source driver has essentially 80% of the performance of the proprietary one. And I would say that this is like a worst case. Um, if your application performs poorly, uh, the situation can surely be improved. And, or if you have a weird use case that maybe isn't supported by the uh, proprietary driver, that's something that could be added as well. Um, so uh, let's look at the, the last vendor here. They're sort of the last ones to the party. Uh, and they're not entirely willingly at the party, but uh, there's some really exciting stuff to be said about ARM. Um, so in the past years, since essentially 2012, there's been a very slow burning type of uh, uh, reverse engineering effort. In 2012, a guy called uh, Luke Verhagen started uh, reverse engineering the Mali 400 series of GPUs. They're pretty low-end, uh, relatively simple GPUs. And he created a prototype, which unfortunately was never truly open sourced. He gave some talks about it, and it did work, at least in some cases. Um, but since the code was never really published, uh, not a lot happened. And the effort sort of died out until 2000, 2017 where Kiang Yu uh, decided to pick up uh, the work. Uh, Kiang is a developer at AMD, <laughs> which is interesting. Uh, this is pretty common, a, a thing you see quite often in this space, where a developer of one company is prohibited, for, uh, uh, prohibited from contributing towards his driver, so he develops a driver for another company instead, because he has the knowledge and he wants to make an open source driver, but he can't make it for his own hardware. Uh, so in 2017, uh, Kiang picked this up uh, for the Mali 400 series. This driver is called Lima. Uh, and in 2018, uh, there, um, a new driver for the Mali T series and G series of GPUs called Panfrost uh, was uh, created by Alyssa Rosenschwieg and Connor Abbott. And uh, this is essentially the current uh, middle and high-end AMD GPUs. And they've been reverse engineered from scratch. Um, and very recently, both Panfrost and Lima uh, have landed in the kernel and the Mesa repositories. So they're fully supported by, or not, not fully supported, they're supported by uh, open source drivers both. And uh, currently, the Panfrost driver runs uh, Wayland, runs 3D apps, and uh, uh, Collabra has decided to contribute towards it too, and we do contribute uh, to full-time engineers to working on this, so we're trying to push this forward. But this started as a community process, and without the community, uh, we, wouldn't be, we wouldn't be anywhere, essentially. If uh, you're curious about what this looks like, we have a demo at our booth. You can come play some uh, Super Tux Kart with us. We're all pretty terrible, so I'm sure you'd win. Um, so that's very exciting, but there's some more stuff coming down the line. Um, so a big thing is OpenCL and OpenCL support. And it's been a big thing for a long time because um, there, it's essentially a, a large step from not supporting it to supporting it. And the community interest, unlike for 3D, is a lot smaller, so we depend on like client work, essentially. Like, like a client would have to come to us and say, we want OpenCL, make this happen, here's a bag of money. And then we could go into like development mode. Uh, currently, a few of the drivers, however, are seeing some interest in some work being done to support uh, OpenCL. The Fredrino driver, the Nouveau driver, and the Ethnaviv driver. Um, so these are mostly um, intended to be used in uh, like the embedded space. And uh, the work itself has come in the form of enabling uh, a uh, 
new or the most modern uh, uh, compiler intermediate representation that Mesa supports called uh, NI NIR. So NIR is one part of op enabling OpenCL. The other part is having an OpenCL compiler front end uh, that works and is compatible with NIR. And uh, that essentially means LLVM and uh, getting LLVM to support uh, yeah, OpenCL and yeah, re recent OpenCL features. Uh, some work is being done in this space too. Uh, it's also not done, but hopefully we could see OpenCL support merged into LLVM soon, maybe this year, maybe next year. Um, then there's uh, Vulkan Compute, which is already working for the two big driver uh, developers in the Mesa space. So Intel and AMD have Vulkan drivers, and their Vulkan drivers already support Vulkan Compute. So that's very interesting, and especially how it relates to OpenCL. Um, if you ask Kronos, the standards body that are responsible for both Vulkan, OpenCL, and, op and OpenGL, they will tell you that uh, Vulkan Compute is not an OpenCL replacement. It's not meant to be. So uh, that might be an interesting data point, <laughs> even if the support for some of these drivers is pretty good for Vulkan Compute. It may not be something that you should uh, hope too much for. Uh, in terms of solving your uh, embedded compute um, issues. And then there's uh, Cycle. And Cycle is a layer that is, that is intended to be built on top of uh, OpenCL, essentially. Uh, so think of it as, as CUDA, essentially. It's a single source uh, language that allows you to compile both the compute kernel and your application in a single source file. It also solves um, some other issues. Um, so that's something to look forward to. And that's also a standard that's backed by Kronos. Uh, as for the, the, bigger, tick, uh, the bigger picture, um, some drivers are, are extremely mature and have been around for a long, long time. Some are newer, yet still very mature. Um, the community drivers now all share the same code base, especially with Intel now moving to the Gallium, or to using Gal the Gallium framework. Uh, this is very much the case that what benefits one driver will likely benefit the others as well, uh, be it uh, stability through testing or better performance through optimization. Um, there's a lot to be gained for, for everyone when uh, one of the vendors makes um, some contribution. <laughs> reverse engineering a driver. From reverse engineering to having something actually upstream takes something like one to seven years. That's pretty hand wavy, but uh, it's, it's a number. Uh, maybe the average is a lot closer to one or two years. And compute is still on the way, as it always has been. Uh, we'll see. Uh, maybe next year, maybe the year after that. Uh, but maybe the more interesting question to ask yourself, why do you even care about running open source drivers? Why does it matter? Like, my NVIDIA proprietary driver works just fine. It's great. It's performant. It supports all the use cases I have. Uh, but there are some real important uh, thoughts or things to think about this. Uh, if you want to, want to support your product for a seriously long time, um, be it uh, one year or 20 years, getting a vendor to actually support the, their proprietary driver is A, going to be hard, or B, going to cost you a lot of money. Uh, so that's an important uh, question to, to have in mind when choosing what software stack you want to use, especially if you're developing actual physical products. Um, and uh, the performance of the open source driver is um, mostly uh, on par, sometimes better, sometimes worse, with the proprietary ones. It really depends on, on which vendor we're talking about here. Um, but for Intel and AMD, that's certainly the case. For uh, Vivante, it's more of a, uh, it depends on your application. For ARM, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> if it's working, we're, we're very happy. Uh, the performances may, may be uh, good in some cases, but it's not competitive with the pr proprietary blob. Uh, another very important uh, question to ask yourself is how are we going to debug this thing? Uh, 
if you have simple debugging, your time to market is going to be lower. That's just a fact. Uh, getting the insight that you need to, to solve an issue immediately really matters. And it matters when you're in the most critical phase of development, like bringing a thing up. Uh, if you don't have any insight, it'll just take you longer. And, and lastly, like having old hardware supported for a long time and means that maybe you'll see new features added to uh, your old hardware, especially when it comes to the community uh, graphics drivers that share the Gallium uh, framework. Like you get a lot of stuff for free just because the, it's the same code base. If you make an improvement to one driver, it may be available to the other ones. And yeah, why, what's not to like about that? And that's essentially it. That's everything I wanted to say. Um, does anyone have any questions? Shoot. How to do it? <laughs> There's barely support for OpenCL as it is. So I would say no. Uh, but the intention is, of course, to do it as, as well as possible. And like when you're developing support for a feature like OpenCL, a big one, like uh, having the debug tools that other people will need yourself is something that you want, right? You want your development to be easy and then as a result, other people's development process will be easy as well. Um, but as for the actual way to do it, I, I can't tell you that. All right. I think that's the, the general thing about the open source space, or sorry, the, the compute space, especially within open source. There's a lot to be done. And some of the work is underway, and some is yet to start. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. For Panfrost? Yeah. It's upstream. Oh, it's already upstream. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we're running it, the upstream version on in our booth. So. so in Mesa already. In Mesa and in the kernel. Yep, it's there. You can run uh, your normal desktop. We run GNOME Shell on, on our demo. It's just... Uh, no, none. Wow. Yeah, it just works. I mean, it's not flawless, but it does work. Uh, any other questions? Sorry, louder. Uh, not for that specific uh, uh, benchmark, no. I didn't look into it. I just ran a benchmark to have some numbers to show you that the performance, while not always better, is competitive or in the, the right ballpark. Um, I'm sure if you wanted better performance, it could be improved, specifically for that case or other cases. Any other questions? Shoot. So um, uh, the Panfrost driver ta targets um, both the G series and the T series of uh, ARM GPUs. However, uh, we're only currently using the or testing against the T series. Uh, the G series is further out, I think. There's, it's been reverse engineered uh, to a large extent, but very little actual development has, uh, has been done towards supporting that platform. I mean, there is a, a project like that, but I, unfortunately, I don't think Panfrost is on, it, on there. It's called uh, Mesa Tracker. So for the other drivers, like uh, Etnaviv, you can have a look at that. Uh, Panfrost should maybe at some point have that uh, enabled as well. All right, any more questions? In that case, I think we're done. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>